More kudos and accolades for Amon Ross St. Brown. And boy, that dude is just a badass. We'll explain coming up next. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's a Wednesday edition, everybody, of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you Wednesday, September 21st to Thursday, September 22nd, inching closer to the Lions' first road game of 2022 as they are on the road in Minnesota to face the Vikings, one and one Lions, one and one Vikings. We'll get into a little bit of talk about that. And then tomorrow, Luke Braun, the host of Locked On Vikings, will join me for the Thursday crossover brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Today's Locked On Lions is proudly sponsored by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Coming up on today's show, some kudos and accolades, as I said. A little bit of an award for Amon Ra St. Brown. We'll explain that coming up. Injury list today, kind of a long list of players that missed practice, including one guy that's played pretty well that's going to be out a little bit of a while, uh, a little bit of a while due to surgery. We'll explain that coming up momentarily on the show as well. Jared Goff is performing well, and is it time? Are we at that point right now where we need to put something to rest about his future? We'll discuss that coming up momentarily. We'll take a look at the uh, Vegas odds as well and where the Lions sit right now. From our friends at Bet Online. all of that coming up on the show today here on a Wednesday edition of Locked on Lions. Man, fan base is pumped, excited for this weekend. Remember, last season, the Lions went on the road nine times. Nine times. My Ferris Bueller impersonation. And uh, they went 0-8-1. They didn't win a single road game last year under Dan Campbell. All three of their wins, of course, Arizona, Minnesota, and Green Bay, were all at uh, Ford Field. So... Lions have got to win their first road game under Dan Campbell, and no better time to do it than this weekend, certainly against Minnesota. Follow me on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D-E-R-Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, Matt Derry Facebook fan page. And for those of you watching on YouTube, hello. Thank you for subscribing and watching on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Our numbers have gone up. Um, I don't think I'm doing any any great new shows or new content or bits. I'm going to bring you opinions. We're going to have good guests on. We're going to have a lot of fun give you the news of the day and what I think uh, of what's going on with this football team. Um, But you guys are excited. People are on board. And thank you for letting your friends know about us and and the podcast here because it's growing. And we appreciate that. And I was telling somebody the other day, I think it was my buddy Anthony Pavisic, who is a P1 listener. The numbers were down that last year, Matt Patricia. His third season that he even got a third year, many of you were not interested anymore in the football team, and I don't blame you. Now people are excited, certainly, about this direction. We'll see where this heads and where this is going. If you listen to yesterday's show, Colin Cowherd and Jonathan Vilma from Fox waxing poetic about the Lions' playoff chances. I'm not ready to go there just yet, but it is exciting to see what is happening with this football team right here, right now. All right, Amon Ross St. Brown this morning was named the NFC's Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, Of course, this past Sunday against the Washington Commanders, he caught nine balls for 116 yards, two touchdowns, plus he he gained 68 yards in the ground game. And uh, also, you know, he's breaking all these records, both franchise and league-wide. Became the first-ever NFL player to record eight catches and a receiving touchdown in six straight games. First Lion and third NFL receiver to reach 100 yards receiving two receiving touchdowns, and 50 rushing yards in a single game, which he did this past weekend. And now, again, he was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Um, What can you say about Amon Ross St. Brown? First time he's ever won the award, which is cool. First Lions player to do it since Jared Goff, who won it last year uh, in their win against the Minnesota Vikings. And, you know, you look at it and you say, what more... Can we ask of Amon Ross St. Brown? Not much. He's a second-year player. 
He's a little bit undersized. He had all of these receivers bypass him in the draft last year. He can name all 20 of them or whatever it was. And he just continues to make plays. And there are plenty of people nationally starting to catch on to Amon Ross St. Brown. But a game like this coming Sunday, where he's likely going to be going up against Patrick Peterson, um, could be that welcome to the big national stage for St. Brown, especially if the Lions win, grab a hold of first place. Um, and, 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 and this kid just continues to show up. You got to think, you have to figure that the Vikings, who have now seen St. Brown three times, are going to try and take him away. But see, for some odd reason, Ben Johnson has gotten the best out of this kid. Going back to last year when uh, uh, Anthony Lynn was basically castrated as offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, as tight ends coach, had a bigger role in the passing game, and Dan Campbell was calling the plays. It's amazing. And you want to know about Amon Ross St. Brown's confidence? He should have it. The guy setting records for most consecutive catches, uh, eight game, uh, eight catch games or more. He's breaking Lions records. And today he was asked about the draft and naming players. Again, he names every single receiver that was taken ahead of him in, in last year's draft. And, you know, Diami Brown or Diami Brown is a receiver for the, uh, the Redskins, the commanders that barely plays, and he was drafted ahead of St. Brown. Today, Amon Ra went sort of ham, all right? Quote, the draft, it is what it is. Even the commanders, they got a guy before me over there. I believe his name is Diami Brown. I don't know how many catches he had. You guys can probably tell me that or how many yards he had. I don't forget things like that. I saw him across the sideline. From where I'm standing during the game, and I'm going to give every day, and I'm going to give every team hell. And then he was asked, "You were watching him?" And he said, "Yeah, quote, I didn't see him in the game much." End quote. When was the last time the Lions had a player? Think about it. That talked this much smack and backed it up. Amon Ross St. Brown is out to get all of these teams that bypassed him and maybe took receivers ahead of him. He knows the team. He knows the receiver. Then he backs it up. We, for years, covered this football team. When players would make proclamations and players would say, I'm great, and players would say, I'm guaranteeing wins, and then the team would stub their toe and lose. Or, 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 or guys would say something and it would come back to bite them. I referenced Golden Tate last week. I love Golden. You know, but Golden was public about, I'm not getting the football, or the offensive coordinator, it's so bad that they know our, the other team knows our plays. And then Golden would go out and maybe not have the year that we expected him to have. Amon Ross St. Brown is targeting all these teams, and he's then backing it up with his play. How are you not getting a number 14 jersey? This dude is cool, and he's really good. So congratulations to him, NFC Offensive Player of the Week. First time the Lion has, a Lion has won that again since last year when Jared Goff did in the come-from-behind win over these Minnesota Vikings. All right, coming up next, let's get you an update on the injury report. We will do that um, in a minute as you gear up for in a minute. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. That's why LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and you can do it for free. I have posted jobs at LinkedIn uh, for my company, uh, my friends at Financial Architects. Well, not my friends, I work there. And it's phenomenal. You're getting bites, you're getting people. It's great. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? That's right. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. 
That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'm going to get this right and actually put the correct. <laughs> there it is. The correct graphic on the screen for our friends at uh, LinkedIn Jobs. All right. Back on Locked On Lions. My timing on the graphics on the YouTube channel is not great, but take a look at it. It's there. Shout out to our friends at LinkedIn. We appreciate you uh, coming aboard with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. All right. Injury report. Let's get to that right now. And uh, let's start with John Kaminsky, the commish, as they call him. Kind of a pleasant surprise, somebody that the Lions picked up um, in the offseason from Atlanta to help with both inside and outside rush. And he's played pretty well the first couple of weeks. John Kaminsky had wrist surgery, according to Dan Campbell this morning, and is going to be out a few weeks. The Lions are not putting him on injured reserve, at least for right now. Uh, Kaminsky posted on his LinkedIn page, he, had a, he has a, a, a newborn baby, and he was holding uh, uh, the, the baby with uh, the cast on his wrist. But he's going to be out a little bit of time, but not a ton of time. But in his absence, some guys are going to have to step up. you you got to figure now Austin Bryant will not be a healthy scratch. Both he and Julian O'Quara will play. And a guy like Demetrius Taylor, Dan Campbell mentioned today, is somebody that might be getting some more snaps and reps with Kaminsky out. A little bit of a surprise today. No practice for Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Dan Campbell said the other day it was a Charlie horse. He's listed on the injury report as not practicing today due to a thigh injury. What's been coming out recently on Aiden Hutchinson is that he's been getting double teamed a ton. And teams are two-timing Hutchinson more than they're double teaming Charles Harris, who of course has more of an NFL track record. Last week, uh, Hutchinson had three sacks and today... Defensive line coach Todd Wash said there were a couple other plays that Hutchinson left on the field. So they're staying tough and hard on him. Um, but for a rookie, he had a really good second game last week with those three sacks. We'll keep an eye on the thigh injury throughout the week. Uh, Jonah Jackson remains uh, out with that finger injury, did not practice today. DeAndre Swift resting his sore ankle, did not practice today. Limited in practice, TJ Hawkinson, Juju Hughes, uh, Amani Oruwarie, who's coming back from the back injury. Frank Ragnow didn't do much in practice today with that foot problem, but was limited. At least he was out there. And uh, Ifiatu Melifanwu has been bothered by that hamstring, and he uh, was just limited in practice today. Here's the bottom line, and we saw this this past weekend against the Commanders. Um, the Lions seem to have a good next-man-up mentality, whether it is injuries or or guys getting sick or or guys coming out of games with cramps like Jeff Okuda did the first couple of weeks. Guys have come in and stepped up and played well. The thing I worry about with injuries like Kaminsky and Hutchinson is I don't think this team has the defensive depth that the offense has. You know, if Josh Reynolds goes out, I'm comfortable with Quintez Cephas. If Frank Ragnow goes out, I'm comfortable with Evan Brown. Dan Skipper, and I didn't predict this, but Dan Skipper had a whale of a game this past Sunday at left guard for Jonah Jackson. I'm concerned about Oru, you know, consistent weeks where an Oruari is out or a Jeff Okuda goes down. Uh, Mike Hughes, who was a former Minnesota Viking, is coming back to Minnesota this week to play, has been pretty solid so far. But a guy like John Kaminsky goes down, and again, he's more of a backup, but he's had a role and has played a lot of snaps these first few weeks. With him being out, who will step in and, and step up and play well? I have confidence in Austin Bryant. I think he's a good depth guy. I don't know if Julian O'Quara can do this at this level. I have not seen it yet, nor am I am I sold on Demetrius Taylor just yet at a good camp, but we'll have to wait and see on that. But we're seeing better depth than we saw a year ago. And now that will be tested this Sunday um, in Minnesota, certainly against the uh, the Vikings. That we're going to have to, uh, you know, we're going to have to find out. We're going to have to wait and see on that. All right, speaking of Minnesota, Jared Goff beat them last year, nearly beat them twice, nearly beat them twice. We might have to put something to rest about Jared Goff and the Lions' future at quarterback. And we'll do that uh, coming up next. 
First, though, what about our friends at BetOnline? BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including everything you need for week three of the National Football League. BetOnline is also your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB. We're coming down to the end of the season, the playoffs. Come on, Guardians. Hang on, baby. MMA, boxing, and golf. You can do it all at Bet Online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it is where the game starts. All right, so there was a very good narrative that went around around draft time that the Detroit Lions were going to be interested in drafting a quarterback. Fans wanted Malik Willis. Remember the Lions? Oh, the Lions said Malik Willis at the Senior Bowl. Oh, Malik Willis, he's the next Lions future quarterback. There are the mock drafts that come out right now. Oh, the Lions are going to get Anthony Richardson. The Lions are going to get Will Levis. Um, uh, you know, Any of these QBs that are off to a good start, they seem to be pegged for Detroit. Heck, um, you know, Vegas odds at the start of the year talking about how Jared Goff, but you know, first quarterback to be benched, and we went over these. And Jared Goff was seven, eight on the list. First of all, they're not benching Jared Goff or Nate Sudfeld. Because Jared Goff's actually playing pretty well. And he's got six touchdowns to start the year, one interception, and his numbers. Since Ben Johnson got more involved a year ago, Anthony Lynn got shoved to the side, Jared Goff's been pretty good. He was terrible at the start of last year. There were games you watched him and went, oh my gosh. You know, the handling of the football, the fumbling, all of that stuff. So can we put this to rest right now or do we need to watch Sunday in Minnesota? Because he could easily go out and throw three picks and Cam Dantzler and Harrison Smith and Patrick Peterson. It's possible. All right, it's definitely possible. I'm not saying Jared Goff is a Pro Bowl quarterback. But don't you think now he's going to be here for a while? Are you just sitting here definitely sold that the Lions are, you know, scouting all these quarterbacks and that with one of their two first-round picks this coming season that they're definitely going to take a quarterback? They could finally draft a developmental person. But I, Jared Goff is still under contract. I know the contract loosens and lessens after this year in terms of a cap hit and everything else. But I, I truly believe with the way he's playing, the way he's leading the team, the way Dan Campbell talks about him, the fact that they've given him some weapons, he's got a pretty good run game, and, and, bear in mind, DeAndre Swift has been really good, right? Really good this year? Yet, for some odd reason, he only carried the ball five times the other day. They still want to put the hand, the ball in the hands of Jared Goff. So this notion that the Lions, and I still see it on the internet, I still see some draft nicks go, oh, we have Anthony Richardson going to the Lions. We've got this, Will Levis, we've got this guy, that guy. I'm not sold. I'm not ready to do that. Who's a kid from Purdue? O'Connell. I saw the other day someone said, Aiden O'Connell, maybe to the Lions. I don't think so. They like Goff a lot. And I don't think he's going anywhere. Now, this weekend, on the road, hostile environment, you know, you you, you got you got uh, 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 Daniil Hunter. Which Smith is there? Is Darius now is on the Vikings? I mean, the, the, the Vikings have some pretty good players on defense. And they've always tried to come after Lion quarterbacks. It's a few years ago, Stafford got nearly de- decapitated in Minnesota. So let's see how he does this week. But the Lions, I think, are going to put him in a position to succeed. And I think they feel like this is the guy here and moving forward right now. I mentioned before our friends at Bet Online. So the Lions Vikings um, line point spread opened at seven and a half before Monday night's Minnesota loss to the Eagles. It was back down to five and a half yesterday. And now it's been bet back up to six, according to our friends at Bet On and Bet Online. Minnesota did not have a good showing Monday night. Kirk Cousins never plays well on Monday night. He had a short work week. Um, 
But the Vikings are still six-point favorites. Remember, there were some people, some analysts and experts before the season saying this is the year Green Bay gets dethroned in the central, or in the central, in the north, and that Minnesota is the team to do it. They've got Justin Jefferson. They've got Dalvin Cook. The O-line is improved. You know, Cousins no longer has the shackles on him because Mike Zimmer hated him, allegedly. That Kevin O'Connell's a bit of a quarterback whisperer. This past Sunday, we did not see enough from Kirk Cousins. He was fine in the opener against the Rams. Um, so I'm intrigued. This game is going to intrigue me. We're going to preview it more with Lucas Braun tomorrow, the host of Locked on Vikings. Thanks for making us your first listen. Crossover tomorrow, big game Sunday. This is exciting. And uh, everybody stay safe out there.